Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. You guys can see that I changed my hair. I felt like my edges needed to rest. So I decided to go for this short style here. This is the hairstyle that I always go for whenever I want to feel like an adult. And I want to feel like an adult right now. So this is the reason why I went on and I got this style. And I also like the way that it looks um, on my face. So I tend to go for it once in a while. I'm wearing it now and I feel like this is going to give my edges the time to rest and if you're wondering what this is this is actually a wig it was made by someone here in Lagos so I'm going to be wearing it for the meantime till I feel like it's time to change things up again so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you guys five popular makeup products that I actually hate I know that hate is such a strong word but that's actually what I feel for most of these products in all honesty I feel like um, in most cases they didn't do what they were supposed to do and sometimes they actually did the opposite of what they were supposed to do for me so I don't like them they're just five products that I'm going to share and this video is not in any way a brand bashing video some of the products that I'm going to share here you guys are going to see that I have favorites from these brands that I use on a daily basis and I use all the time on this channel so it's not about the brands it's about the individual products themselves I did not like them they did not work and I just want to share them with you you guys and nobody should also take some of the things I'm going to say here personally because I know people in real life that actually swear by some of the products that I'm going to be mentioning in this video so if some of these products have worked for you then you're so lucky they just did not work for me so I'm going to show you guys what they are and give you guys reasons why I don't like them as well the first product would be the Nivean Men Sensitive Push Shave Balm People were hyping this thing in 2015. I had read a lot of reviews. I was just hoping that it was going to be the answer to all my oily skin problems. I'm telling you guys, a lot of people were swearing by this. And then I remember like rushing up to the drugstore to get this because I was in the UK at the time. And it was very cheap. It sold for between three to six pounds. But this thing did not do anything. It didn't do anything for my oily skin. I did everything I was supposed to do. I applied it till it got tacky. I followed all the steps that I, I had seen here on YouTube, but it didn't do anything for me. Like considering the way that my skin felt after I had applied it, this might work for someone to, with normal to dry skin, but for anyone with oily skin, no, especially for me, my, my makeup felt like it was sliding off a couple of hours after I had applied it. And that's, that's just horrible it actually felt like a very good base it felt like a very good base but it just doesn't do anything for people with oily skin i'm sorry this did not do anything for me and yeah it didn't do anything for me the next thing for me would be the nars all day luminous weightless foundation this is another thing that i felt like everyone was using and swearing by between spring and summer 2015 i was still in the uk when i bought this as well and it didn't come for cheap this was my first foundation from nas and you guys know how much i love the radiant creamy concealer i swear by it so i was really really excited this was the first foundation that i ever bought from them so i had very very high hopes the the it, it just sounded too good to be true it controlled oil it lasted for 16 hours it uh it was full coverage but then lightweight as well like i could not wait to get my hands on this and this foundation was like an absolute letdown for me at first when this wasn't working i couldn't believe that it wasn't working i felt like i was doing something wrong because at a point most of my favorite people on youtube here that i was subscribed to that had the same skin type as me they were all swearing by this they were all using this they were all loving this and i i was just like there's no way that all these people could love this thing and that I didn't like it. I was doing something wrong. This did not work for me. It didn't work for me. It didn't work for me when I was in the UK. I can't even imagine what this foundation would do for anybody in this Nigerian weather because I don't think that it can hold up to the heat. My face became really oily. It didn't last as long as it was supposed to. I don't understand how anyone with combination to oily skin would love this like i it it just did not make any sense this to me is one of those things that was just overhyped it was overhyped for no good reason and it wasn't cheap it's not like it was cheap you know where there's there are times when the foundation is cheap and then it, it's so good and then everyone is talking about it this wasn't cheap it was really expensive and i can't remember how much i bought it for but i'm going to put the price somewhere wherever i list the name of this the only thing that i would say though is that this foundation is really lightweight i don't think that i've ever had a foundation feel as lightweight as this did on my skin and it's also really really full coverage you can skip a concealer with this if you're looking to conceal dark spots i don't know how they were able to achieve that considering how liquid the formula is but then when it comes to like lasting all day because it creams 16 hours and just controlling oil and looking your face looking fresh and your makeup lasting long this 
this didn't do anything it did not live up to the hype it did not live up to the reputation it was just an absolute waste of money in my opinion it just didn't work another thing for me would be the urban decay all night makeup setting spray this this thing did not work it did not work for me like it's almost like funny how much i hate it i bought this early last year around the time that i picked up the urban decay vice 4 palette and i bought this shortly before i moved back um, to nigeria in january last year after i had just graduated and i was really looking forward to this because i was moving back home the weather is a lot hotter it's a lot humid and i was looking for that extra thing that would give my makeup like the extra pizzazz that i needed so i i got this and i'm just so glad that i didn't spend money on a big bottle i got this and this did not do anything for me if for nothing else it actually made my skin look a lot more oily and a lot more dewy see the thing with me is that i have like combination to oily skin so i never start out dewy i always start out matte because i know that whether i like it or not i'm going to end up dewy you know so i don't see the reason why anyone who has oily skin would apply this immediately after they are done with their makeup because what it does is that it just like at first, the first few times that I used it, I was like, okay, I've just applied it now, so my skin is a little damp. Let's see what it looks like after it dries. And then after it dries, it has this very, very dewy finish that it gives your skin. And I live in Nigeria, you guys know, and I, like it just didn't hold up well with this weather. And I feel like the weather here was the perfect weather to put this to test. I was unable to try this while I was in the UK. Maybe it would have performed differently, but here in Nigeria, where the weather is really hot and humid, this did not this did not do what I expected it to do and with this my face actually looks worse after I have used it than if I didn't use it at all so it's very confusing and I just I just don't like it another product for me would be the MAC mineralized skin finish natural this was one of those products that I got because a lot of people were using it here on YouTube and the way that it worked for me is kind of similar to the way that the Urban Decay setting spray worked with the primer and with the foundation they actually kind of look and feel good after you've applied them so it takes a while for you to actually realize that you hate the way that you know they are both performing on your skin with the Urban Decay setting spray you would notice like shortly afterwards that you hate it it's like a few minutes later that it just doesn't look well this is also one of those things that just doesn't look right shortly after you've used it it makes my skin very very shiny and it leaves it with a very dewy finish that i don't like it might look okay like immediately like after you've applied it but then the minute it sets into the skin and this is not long after you've applied it the minute it sets into the skin your my skin automatically just looks shiny i don't like it i know that it has um, some shiny bits and particles in it i would never recommend that anyone with oily skin or combination skin use this to set their skin if you have normal to dry skin i understand how this will probably work for you because it's probably going to give you like a more natural dewy finish to the skin because of the um, shiny particles the reflective particles that it has in it but for someone who has oily skin and if you're trying to stay matte all day i would not recommend that you use this i did not like this i'm in the shade deep dark i've had it for a very long time this is like the very old one that i have the old packaging mac has since changed the packaging for this product but they still make it a lot of people don't use this as a setting powder these days i haven't seen this in a lot of makeup tutorials so if you're looking for a setting powder maybe consider getting something that doesn't look or work or feel like this i know that mac has other setting powders so maybe you can look into that and just stay away from the mineralized skin finish natural if you have combination to oily skin lastly for me it would be the anastasia beverly Hills deep brown you know you guys know that i love a lot of products from abh but this one was just not it for me i bought this with my money i bought this back in 2014 and if you guys don't know what the deep brow is it's like a brow product that looks and feels just like a gel eyeliner and the reason main reason why i didn't like this is because this is not something that i would recommend for anyone who has fast brows if you have full brows and you're looking to fill in the spaces in between your brows then maybe this would work for you but if you have fast brows like i do this is not something that I would recommend because I don't see how you're going to be able to achieve natural looking brows using this. You know, one is that if you have sparse brows, this might leave your brows feeling a little waxy or shiny, especially if you're someone who gets extremely oily. I don't see how this is supposed to work for you. And the second thing is that it dries out like most gel liners do. And because for me, filling in my brows is like a process that takes a lot of time. I don't like the fact that I have to keep covering as I go into fill and I cover again and I go into fill. Or if you leave it open while you fill it completely, before you know it, it's going to dry out. It's just not an easy product to use, in my opinion. And then there's this um, 
weird thing that happens in pictures where when I used it sometimes my it gives my brows a grayish tint this particular color chocolate it doesn't look gray if you're looking at it it's actually a very dark brown but then sometimes in pictures my my brows just look like very very grayish and I don't think that it is the most ideal thing to use if you have brows like mine I don't feel like you get the most out of it because of how fast it dries and like I just mentioned I don't like the way that it looks in pictures so it's also not very cheap for something that dries out as fast as it does like the price you pay for it I just I just I just don't think that it's worth it I love the brow waist the ABH brow waist that's what I used to fill in my brows all the time that's what I use now so if you have sparse brows and you're looking for brow products you're looking to try um, ABH products I would highly recommend that you try their brow waist pencils that will give you control that will give you soft looking brows that will just like last a lot longer for you than this would so yeah so these are the products that I did not like based on personal experience and I feel like buying any of them would be an absolute waste of your money especially if you have the same skin type as I do or if your brows are similar to mine. I know that we all have products that have done something similar to us. They just didn't live up to the hype or they didn't do what we expected them to do or they just didn't deliver at all. You guys should please share them in the description no in the comment section not description box and I'm going to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.